everybody. Um, my name is Nicole Newlist, or Rogue Clown. I answer to just about anything, I promise. And, <laughs> and <laughs> like I said, just about anything. And I'm here to talk about Capture the Flag. And you, know, you might be wondering, hey, um, why Capture the Flag? That's for all those weak hacks who sit in the rooms with the loud techno and the headphones and Type quick type and don't actually socialize with Tom's at all. Yeah. Totally yeah. not <laughs> true. <laughs> what Capture the Flag does require a few things. Um, it requires creativity. I mean, the problems are weird, and I'll get more a little later into the kinds of problems that you see in Capture the Flag and why they're so weird. But you know, you need to think around them. You need to be curious. You need to figure out, okay, this isn't something I've seen before, but how do I research? How in the world do I solve it? You need persistence. You need to be able to whack your head against the problem and whack your head against the problem and try different things and not give up. Because if the CTF lasts for three days and you go, oh, I can't solve any of this in like five minutes, it's, it's not going to be a whole lot of fun and you're not going to capture very many flags. However, being fleet is not required. This isn't going to be, you know, somebody who's won a bunch of capture the flags and has a wall full of DEF CON flag badges telling you how to do capture the flag. No, that's not me. Um, I've done a few capture the flags, but I wouldn't say I'm the best person on my team. I'd say I'm probably one of the worst people on my team, but I'm there to learn, and I've learned a few things along the way. I mean, my first capture the flag was actually here at ShmooCon four years ago, at ShmooCon 5. I did the Hacker Halo capture the flag, and was awful at the Halo. Like, I think I scored zero points at the Halo. The half I got a few more points, but even then, I mean, I was so nervous about, oh my goodness, you know, I've only been hacking for like not even a year, everyone's gonna think I'm stupid, so I'm just gonna be my own one person team and do what I can. That was a bad idea for a couple of reasons. So, what in the world are you gonna have thrown at you for CTS? There are two main types of CTS. One is generally called Jeopardy style. And it's called Jeopardy style because you have a bunch of different problems in a bunch of different categories. The other is the classic, more attack and defense kind of CTF. Um, most of the CTFs I've done to date have been the Jeopardy style, but I did my first attack and defense CTF on a team back in November of last year. It's called the RUCTFE, and I did it with a group from MySec, Michigan Security. And it was really cool because we not only had teams that were trying to figure out what was wrong with various you know, website services, but also you know, trying to patch our running instances of it. It was my first experience with a live attack and defense CTF. And I mean, there's pluses and minuses to both. I like the fact that I have time to just kind of sit and think through the Jeopardy style problems, but there's something to get your adrenaline going with those classic style ones as well. They're both fun, and they're both worth it. Now what kinds of stuff are you going to see in a CTF? Crypto, exploitation, forensics, programming, reverse engineering, trivia, web applications. If it's something that anyone talks about at a conference, if, you know, be it in a talk or heck, even in the hallway track. I've seen problems on CTFs that are like, give me this piece of trivia about the movie Hackers. Give me this feature that was released in such and such version of such and such software. Just super goofball stuff. And some of it is easily Googleable, some of it is not. And, you know, you have to figure it out. Forensics, there's different kinds of categories of forensics that I've seen. I've seen log analysis, packet forensics, drive forensics. So that's one of the really nice things about CTF and one of the good reasons to get involved in CTF is there's a little bit of something for everyone. If you want to get better at something that you're already good at, chances are you're going to find something in a CTF. If you want to explore learning something that you don't know yet, chances are you're going to find it in a CTF. And even though you might feel a little bit of the adrenaline, a little bit of the pressure of the competition, it's not in a live environment or in a client environment or in an environment that anyone's going to expect anything more of you than spend some time trying to get some flags. What kind of tools do you need for CTF? You probably already have them. Um, I've got some virtual machines that I use for CTFs. I have uh, you know, my Backtrack 5 VM is the one that I use 
more often than anything, just because I'm comfortable in a Linux, Linux environment. Um, I also have a Windows one that I use mainly because you'll sometimes see Windows reversing type challenges on there, you know, pexecutables.net reversing, and obviously that's a little easier to do on a Windows environment. Um, I do highly suggest running it in virtual machines. Um, one, because of, you know, it's nice to go back to a snapshot if that's how you like to work. But two, sometimes, you know, kind of figuring out what's going on in these CTF problems, especially exploitation, reverse engineering type stuff, you're going to be running random pieces of code that other hackers who are running the CTF have provided you. It's probably not malicious, but why take a chance? Um, another thing to you know for CTF, scripting languages, really useful. Um, I script most of my solutions in Python. Um, I don't care if you use Python, Perl, Ruby, Shell Script, PowerShell, doesn't matter what language we use, just know at least one because, like I said before, CTF organizers are tricky. It's not like they're going to be throwing you know, known exploits and known software at you. It's a lot, a lot of times custom applications that they've developed just to be tricky. And so throwing all the exploits in the book at it and seeing what sticks, not going to fly. Um, as far as utilities, pretty much any kinds of utilities that you're comfortable using, use it. I mean, I use my hex editor quite a bit when I'm doing capture the flag, hex editor, text editor, um, you know, Wireshark I use quite a bit if it's anything involving packets or traffic. Um, I could go on and on, this is only a 15 minute talk and that would be really boring for me to stand and be like, I use this tool, I use that tool, I'm not here to put you to sleep. So yeah, anything that you're comfortable using, anything that you're interested in learning, anything that you think might be applicable to that problem that you're trying to solve, use it. As far as stuff you're not going to use, you know, scanners, <coughs> vulnerability scanners, yeah. I've never used, never used Nessus, never used Nexpose, never used, I don't use Metasploit framework, anything like that. They totally have their place in real life pen tests, but in general, capture the flag isn't a real life pen test. Capture the flag is often, you know, solving, <coughs> solving custom problems that people have created and they kind of want to see how you attack it. It's not the normal, you know, MSO8067 all day, every day. Now, I said earlier that I did my first CTF alone. That was really stupid. Please, join a team. Don't be shy about it. Um, I have here a list of some of the people that I've captured some flags with on my set. It's not a complete list, but I love you all my set. Um, people are not going to laugh at you if you don't know anything. People are not going to laugh at you if you don't know the answers to everything. That's what I was so afraid of when I started doing CTFs. And the best way to do it is just get over yourself. The nice thing about being on a team is, you know, there will be people who have this varying experience. Everything from, I've never done a CTF before, I'm just getting started in security, all the way to, I've been in security for years and years and years, and I've lost count of how many CTFs I've done. And that's great, because it means if you're new to CTF, you can learn from your teammates. Also, you know, you probably have teammates, let's say you have teammates who know a lot about programming or know a lot about reverse engineering, but may not know quite so much about crypto or network forensics, and you might bring that knowledge to the table. So, you know, focus on what, what you can bring to the CTF team, what you know, or what you're able to do. You know, if you, if you can contribute, you know, eight hours and some creativity, that's awesome. And like I said, CTF organizers are tricky, and the worst possible thing in a CTF is to run out of ideas. <coughs> um, sometimes I get really cranky when I'm doing a CTF, you know, weekends that I'm doing CTFs. I get really annoying, you probably really don't want to deal with me, and it's good that I'm kind of hiding in my basement apartment and nobody can see me, because I've run out of ideas, I'm pissed off, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so pissed, this just needs to end, or, ugh. And that happens so much less when I'm on a team because I can at least be like, here, I've got these ideas, you know, I'll talk to them on IRC or post them on Dradis, D-R-A-D-I-S, which is 
a really nice framework for laying out notes and make a file folder for each CTF problem and people can take notes and edit notes and post files and collaborate. It's really nice if you're not all in the same place or you know, most of the CTF teammates are in Michigan and I'm not. <laughs> but you know, instead of getting frustrated that you're running out of ideas, you have people to hash it out with. And that leads me into my next point, try all kinds of weird stuff. When I started doing CTFs, I would get an idea, and if my you know first or second crack at it was you know, not going, you know, didn't work. It's like oh you know it wasn't this kind of encryption. Oh it wasn't that kind of encoding. I'm sick of this. I'm going to move on. Um, that's not that's not the way to do it. You know, trying to figure out it might not be this. It could be a little different. You know, the key might not be the name of the capture the flag. The key might be. Name the organizer, the name of the common it's associated with. Just keep thinking of ideas and write your ideas down. I mean, I've lost count of the number of times that I've had an idea earlier in the CTF, not written it down, got distracted by some other problem or barking up some other tree, and then I find out when I'm you know, later in the CTF or when I'm reading write-ups that, oh, <coughs> that was the answer. I mean, I was doing this one, it was actually the ghost in the shell code teaser round last month, and there was a clue on a crypto problem, and it was this haiku. And way at the beginning of it, I'm like, oh, it's got to be some cryptographic key that's a haiku. And I did some googling and looking around and was coming up with nothing, so I ended up barking up a bunch of other trees, and I found out hours and hours later that, you know, oh, so, you know, somebody said something on IRC, and then somebody else said something on Twitter, and I kind of put two and two together. It's like, oh, that thing I was Googling hours ago, maybe I should try a decryption key as opposed to cryptographic key. And boom, like the second result on Google had me going, and I had the answer like five minutes later. So I think it wouldn't have taken me like five hours to kind of come back to it if I had actually written down my ideas and kept track of my brainstorming. So, you know, this is kind of a crash course on what Capture the Flag is and how you can get involved doing it. Um, sorry, one more thing going back to the whole idea of finding a team, finding um, people to do it with. Seriously, it can be anyone. You know, if you're interested in doing CTF and you have a friend in the con who starts talking about CTF, ask if you can help them out with one. Join their team. You know, IRC, Twitter. You know, maybe you know five or ten people who are interested in doing it and want to get started. Even if none of you have ever done a CTF before, you come in with different backgrounds, different experiences, just to get together and do it. And how do you get together doing it? One is there's a website called ctfton.org, and it's got a calendar of Capture the Flag contests that are coming up. Another great resource for that and other things is Forgotten Sex CTF website. Forgotten Sex CTF website is awesome. Not only, <laughs> not only does it have a list of CTFs, you know, what month of the year they tend to fall, what cons are associated with, that sort of thing, it's got links to write-ups for solutions, it's got links to practice and war games, it's, it's got everything CTF on there, and if there's something that you know about CTF that's not on there, you can contribute to it. Um, one of my favorite directories for um, war games to practice on is, you know, there's not necessarily CTF every weekend that you can make, but it's good to practice on your spare time if you want to get better at it. captf.com slash practice CTF. It's got a nice, good quality list of places to go. Sorry, am I running out of time? One minute. All right, almost done. Um, bugs, session timeout and tunnel vision. Session timeout. Practice, practice, practice. Once the CTF is over, read CTF write-ups. Write your own write-ups of problems that you've solved, so one, it eats in your brain, and two, you can contribute back to the community. And, you know, practice, practice, practice. The, be the, the best idea I've gotten for that is from my friend Wolf, who actually gave me the idea to give this talk in the first place. He has a goal that he does one CTF-style problem every week. If you want to do more, that's cool, but if you shoot for one a week, it'll at least keep you going and keep you thinking. Finally, tunnel vision. When I started thinking about, hey, I should do CTS, I thought they were all at cons. 
And I didn't want to spend my time doing the CTF. I want to spend my time talking to people and my time at home doing CTF. They're not all at cons. There are independent ones. There are ones at cons that you can participate in remotely. If you have time, if you have a spare weekend or a spare day, you can do a CTF.